Peter says we sound alike. Really? I don't hear it. Actually, I think I do hear it now. Really? Yeah, you know, we've never really had any extended interaction, so I've never noticed it. Hey, I think I hear it too. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cartoon characters that were voiced by their own creators. Just call me your Grunkle Stan! Sir, sir, sir! Why are you talking to our son? Hey, Schnitzel, it's me, your creator. Hi. Hey, Rival Flavin, how do you do? I am Grunk. Here's the guy I'm introducing to you. And I am. For this list, we're looking at animated characters who are voiced by their own makers. We're not limiting ourselves to one character per entry, as being able to voice multiple characters really adds to their repertoire. Plus, it's just really fun hearing actors talk to themselves. Anyway, which of these shows is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 10. Nick Birch, Maurice, Coach Steve, and more by Nick Kroll. Big Mouth. Sorry, bro. She wants a real man. Ninth grade. Top of the food chain. The variety of characters played by comedian Nick Kroll on Big Mouth is simply staggering. Coach Steve. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm basically alone all the time. <laughs> Number four, Lola. Oh my god, Jimmy, like, I want to go to a pretty little wireless meet and greet. Exploring the misadventures of puberty, the sitcom was co-created by Kroll and best friend Andrew Goldberg. While the show focuses on fictionalized child versions of themselves, the Andrew character is voiced by John Mulaney, and Kroll voices Nick himself. Yeah, you're acting kind of weird. I'm not acting weird. You're acting weird. Dude, I'm allowed to go to the dance with whoever I want. It's not like you're my girlfriend or something. All right, that's it. He also brings to life Maurice the Hormone Monster, who couldn't sound more different than Nick Birch. Good night, you Prince of Westchester, you king of the tri-state area. In addition, he voices Coach Steve, Rick the Hormone Monster, Lola Ugfuglio Scumpy, and a whole host of others, giving all of them completely distinct personalities. Who's the man? Spoiler alert, it's Steve, aka the man. Number 9. Hank Rutherford Hill by Mike Judge, King of the Hill. Who else but Mike Judge could pull off that famous goofy scream? Out of my way, rooster boy. Oh, oh. Hank Hill's the main protagonist of the series, loosely modeled after Tom Anderson from Beavis and Butthead. You can almost hear it in their voices. Hello? Can I get some help here? Hello? I'm looking for some Spanish tile to finish off my new pool cabana. Unlike the retired veteran, however, Hank is much more down to earth and acts as the voice of reason. You kind of need to be when you're dealing with friends and neighbors like his. Despite being so level-headed, Hank isn't above losing his temper or raising his voice when he wants respect. And you do well to give it to him when you hear that stern tone. Be glad that his anger is loud and clear, unlike Mike as Boomhauer. Yeah, man, talking about no, no dang old psychos allowed, man. Good God, you're serious? Number 8. Lumpy Space Princess by Pendleton Ward. Adventure Time. Password, please. Whatever, it's 2009! Good day, princess. Sometimes, unlikely combinations make for the most interesting characters. Meet Lumpy Space Princess, voiced by creator Pendleton Ward, a sassy, floating, purple blob that thinks she and her lumps are all that and a bag of chips. I was just trying to help, but whatever. No. No, not whatever. I know I mess things up sometimes, but I'm really trying. Oddly enough, Ward came up with the voice for LSP by cursing in a valley girl voice around the office. A strange origin, but it makes it all the more fitting for such a strange character. Her outrageous personality and voice are guaranteed to make you love LSP. Lumps and all. These lumps, I know you want to slump up on these lumps, but you can't cause you're a chump. Number 7. Beavis and Butthead by Mike Judge. Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is cool and everything, but it's like, uh, this video's been giving me nightmares, Butthead. <laughs> cool. They say you can be your own best friend, but Mike Judge takes that literally by voicing both Beavis and Butthead. Does MTV own the merchandising rights? Have my it? name on it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Beavis is the wilder one of the duo, which is made evident by his constant cackling through his lower lip biting. Hey, Butthead, I found some more of Anderson's tools. Check it out. <laughs> Butthead, being the more laid back of the two, has a deep voice and laughter that both sound slow and dim, with a telltale lisp mixed in. <laughs> This is stupid. <laughs> Why did Anderson put this thing on the tool shed? Anyone can do these voices, but Mike set the bar for voicing both of these stereotypical teenage dimwits while they discuss all things cool and sucky, and occasionally harm one another. 
Number 6. Miscellaneous Major Characters by Christopher McCulloch and Doc Hammer, The Venture Bros. Holy moly, look at my date! She's a super villain, possibly a Medusa. One perk of being a cartoonist is getting to voice as many different characters as you want. Co-creator Christopher McCulloch takes advantage of this by voicing over 20 characters on the show, including Hank Venture, the adventurous half of the titular Venture twins. Outside of that, McCulloch's acting shines when he works alongside co-creator Doc Hammer as a voice-acting dynamic duo. I'm not gonna sit here alone. I look like an idiot. Dude, you just ate dinner with a guy dressed exactly like you. At least I look like a popular idiot. Probably their most hilarious work as a duo is voicing the unexpected married couple, the Monarch and Dr. Girlfriend. McCulloch's shrill Monarch voice perfectly complements Hammer's comically manly voice for Dr. Girlfriend. And the chemistry they share only strengthens both creators' skills as humorous and believable thespians. Feel the phlegmy rumble of your chest as you told me, this is heaven. I believed you. You can't do that. When you threw me out, I was devastated. Number 5. Mickey Mouse by Walt Disney. Various. <laughs> we fooled him. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Who else could have voiced Disney's most beloved icon other than the founder himself? Even before Mickey could talk, Walt Disney provided vocal noises that go hand in hand with the comedic music and sound effects. Though composer Carl W. Stalling spoke Mickey's first words, Disney set the standard for our favorite mouse's voice. Shy, falsetto, and bubbling with cartoony optimism. Oh, I can't believe it. Is it bad? What? It says here that you can change yourself into anything. By the 1940s, Disney had retired voicing the mouse in short films, but returned to the role for the 1950s run of the Mickey Mouse Club. The last time he voiced Mickey was for the Mickey Mouse Club back in 1955. Hi, Mouseketeers! Hi, Mickey! Well, what's going on today? Sadly, Walt Disney passed away in 1966, but his voice for his own creation served as inspiration for all future Mickey Mouse portrayers, such as the late Wayne Allwine. Making you my partner. A, a partner? Oh, thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Number 4. Grunkle Stanley Stan Pines by Alex Hirsch. Gravity Falls. You do know what day it is? Um, happy anniversary? Marvel Toss! <laughs> it's family fun day, genius! They say family is your best inspiration for a character. Alex Hirsch took inspiration from his actual grandpa Stan and created and voiced the money loving crotchety great uncle, or Grunkle, Stan Pines. Like his personality, Hirsch's voice for Stan is very gruff while mixed with his own high voice. All right, all right, look alive, people. I need someone to go hammer up these signs in the spooky part of the forest. Not it. Not it. While his tone is usually cynical, he can sound pretty childish when he wants to. I love you. Oh, come on! Boo! Boo! At least it's a voice that won't haunt your dreams like Bill Cipher's, also played by Hirsch. Everyone has a weakness, tough guy. I'll make you talk. It's only a matter of time. Despite his greedy and world-weary attitude, Stan cares a lot for his family. And if anyone can take down Bill, it's him, surprisingly. Number 3. Rick Sanchez and Morty Smith by Justin Roiland. Rick and Morty. Well, Rick, that's, that's one, one heck of a story. I sure do wish I could have been there to see it happen. Oh, come on. Who wants to watch a mad scientist use handmade sci-fi tools to take out highly trained alien guards? The titular grandpa and grandson dimensional hoppers both share the voice of series co-creator Justin Roiland. I'm gonna tell you where to stick it. Because... Got it. See, that sounds too sober. In addition to being able to alternate between both characters, Rick's voice being more gravelly and apathetic while Morty's is more apprehensive, Justin has a great talent in being able to improvise his lines and even make impromptu conversations between the two. Oh, I'm Mr. Sneezy. Achoo. Huh? Seems like TV from other dimensions has a somewhat looser feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. This is his way of making the dialogue feel more natural, and it works. He even makes special preparations for Rick's constant burping. It takes comedic skill to deliver unscripted dialogue with yourself, but Justin pulls it off for these two with ease. And you would not believe where these little conversations can go. If it takes nine seasons, I want my McNugget tipping sauce, about, Szechuan Rick? sauce, Morty. That's what's that's gonna take what us all the way to about? the end, Morty. Season nine more seasons, Morty. Number two, Eric Cartman by Trey Parker. South Park. 
Hey, new kid, do you want an invitation to my birthday party? Here begins the rule of pain, the new domination of psych! I wasn't gonna give you an invitation! <laughs> on top of writing and animating every episode on a tight schedule, Matt Stone and Trey Parker also voice nearly every male character on South Park. One of Trey's favorite voices is Eric Cartman. Like a lot of his and Matt's kid voices, Trey's pitch is raised slightly. But what really brings it home is the nasally lisp-like accent that can only be heard from a spoiled little bigot. Oh, look what Kyle got me! It's a red mega- Ants in the pants? Ants in the pit. Ants in the pants! It's a game, dude! It's really fun! With this silly voice, Trey successfully displays all the elements of Cartman's personality. From scheming and manipulating, to throwing tantrums, to acting just plain pathetic. While some can't stand him, others will agree. It's just not South Park without Cartman's nasally voice. That's right! You and me! Right now! We're having it out! Let's go! Come on! Come on! I used to impersonate Cartman, and I was bad at it then, and I'm probably worse at it now, so I will spare you. However, I will say that it was him singing Come Sail Away. Anyway, uh, our number one pick also has a tendency to sing as his characters. So let's take that very obvious clue through the honorable mentions, and then we'll see the top cartoon characters who are voiced by their own creator. Mordecai by James Garland, J.G. Quintel. Regular show. Dude, I fix stuff all the time. No, you don't. What do you mean? The cart, the shoes, the party, that other party. Stop right there. Ralph Bighead by Joe Murray. Rocco's Modern Life. Well then. Why are you in my office? We love your cartoon. Jeff the Spider by Maxwell Adams. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. He usually just jabs me with a big stick. Ow! I'll jab you good, you filthy bug! Why won't you love me, Dad? I'll be anything you want me to be! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Peter, Brian, and Stewie Griffin by Seth MacFarlane. Family Guy. Hi there, I'm Peter Griffin, and you're watching PTV, where you get to watch your favorite shows as nature intended them. It's practically become a law that Seth MacFarlane has to play at least one character in his projects. Family Guy is no exception, where he voices dozens of characters, including three members of the Griffin family. Yeah, so Brian, would you like some Cool Whip? What, why, why, why are you saying it like that? What am I saying? I'm saying Cool Whip. <laughs> oh, you're saying Cool Whip? Yes, I'm saying Cool Whip. <laughs> you're putting a lot of emphasis on the age. No, cool Whip, I'm saying Cool Whip. These three include Peter, the dim-witted husband and father, Brian, the scholarly talking dog, and Stewie, the tyrannical toddler with a British accent. While this trio's interactions are just Seth talking to himself, their distinct accents highlight their differing personalities and help build a chemistry between each other, especially Stewie and Brian. We're having the time of our lives. The only thing more impressive than acting as all three is singing as all three, and Seth pulls it off effortlessly, showcasing the actor's true talent juggling capabilities. Here's the plain situation. There's no negotiation with the fellas at the freaking FCC. Have you ever seen that video of Seth MacFarlane talking to himself as all his different characters? It's insane, and he also voices Quagmire, so it's even worse. Anyway, uh, I am particularly partial to Nick Kroll on Big Mouth and LSP on Adventure Time. But anyway, let us know which of these creators' voice acting performances impresses you the most. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya!